The iconic image, Kissing the War Goodbye, took place in a flurry of excitement and came to be known as a symbol of patriotism and joy for the end of the long, hard war. It is said to define modern history, but we think it defines a different history. A history that has been locked behind closed doors not to be spoken of. This photo, and its impact, depicts exactly that. Non-consensual advances being warped into a hugely romantic moment. In reality, this image is not of two lovers embracing on the bustling streets of New York. Rather, it is nothing more than sexual assault. The woman in the photograph was unknowingly grabbed by a man who forced her to kiss in celebration for not having to return to war. The response to this picture is a perfect depiction of rape culture in our country. It goes way back, um, way back in our history as human beings, but I think most often today we can apply it because um, whenever a dominant culture is threatened, they're going to turn the tables and try to blame the victim. And in cases like that, they'll say, well, what was she wearing or how much did they have to drink? And none of those things are ever reasons for a human being to violate another human being as in a terrible um, case of rape crime. Um, why, are, why do you think survivors of sexual violence quietly are discouraged from speaking out? Well, I believe that um, survivors of sexual violence are discouraged from speaking out because it will bring attention to a horrible crime um, and bring attention to the perpetrator. And I think that most often the dominant culture doesn't want that attention. It also has been known in our society to be um, kind of a shameful thing to have happened to somebody. And let's keep it under the rug, let's not talk about it, and just move on to um, kind of avoid shame you know, for some people. We were still wondering why people were so afraid to come forward to the police with rape or sexual assault cases. So we met with Sergeant Stephen Richter of the West Bloomfield Police Department. Here's what he had to say. So what kind of training do police go through regarding um, and dealing with survivors of sexual violence? Well, there's, there's basic training that any police officer would get, whether it be at the academy and then on the job. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there's specialized classes. Like here in Oakland County, we have what's called Haven. They're an organization that uh, basically helps most police departments in Oakland County. Um, so uh, a lot of times, depending on the age and the situation, um, they would be involved with what we do in terms of actually performing the, the examination. Mm -hmm. Those classes aren't necessarily mandatory. Women or a man came in and claimed um, that they were a victim of a CSC criminal sexual conduct, that's what we refer to rape as mm -hmm. in Michigan. Um, we would get their story and depending on the time frame, we would then, uh, Haven has a, a house that we take the victim to and then they call in a forensic nurse and they'd perform an examination on them. Mm -hmm. And then they would follow it up, like I said, here at, at West Bloomfield, we have a detective um, who uh, specializes and has been to a lot of those classes and they'd probably do the follow up. So like your initial officer when you made the report, um, would, would just take the basic information down and try to help them as best they can. And like a lot of times that's just uh, getting them in touch with the resources like Haven. Yeah. They can do a much better job than what we can. What um, classifies the CSC as a first, second, third, or fourth? Okay, so now there, there are a lot of different things. Um, so right off the bat, like, so if you're dealing with um, first degree or Third degree, usually you're dealing with penetration mm -hmm. of some sort. Um, the other thing that can make it first degree, uh, as opposed to, well, first you're gonna have the penetration, but you're gonna have a person under the age of 13 that automatically makes it a first degree. Mm -hmm. Whereas, let's say it's somebody under 13, but there's no penetration uh, with with anything, if it's, if it's more just the physical touching and stuff like that, that would be categorized as a CSC second degree. And then uh, the elements in the third and the, the fourth a lot have to do with like age. Yeah. So as they get older, it might not be as severe. 
So would you say that the number of people has risen or gone down at all or remained relatively steady since <clears throat> you entered law enforcement? I don't, I wouldn't say that I've not necessarily noticed an increase, um, but I have noticed more people are willing to talk about it. Though police stations are seeing an increase in the number of people reporting rape and sexual assault cases, the stigma of rape culture continues to linger. They just uncovered over 11,000 rape kits that were um, hidden or forgot about or whatever the case was. And um, they were tested, and I think right now they have over 60 convictions and leading to 700 possible more convictions um, once trials take place. So I think laws need to get tougher. Um, I think we need to teach our boys not to rape. I think that culture has very much become kind of immune as if it's not a big deal, as if that's the purpose of women, and obviously we know that isn't. So I think teaching males not to rape um, as far as how they're raised and to respect women is very important. We have all the tools to make rape culture extinct in our country. We simply need to utilize them. When people stop coming up with excuses for these heinous crimes and stop looking past rape and sexual assault, whether it be in everyday life or in that iconic photo, that is when progress will be made.